And so earlier we said that, you know, a lot of these immunotherapies are interchangeable, right? We're using the users like bembolizumab, dervalumab, tezolizumab, et cetera. Do we feel that way about uh, the, the uh, KRAS G12C inhibitors? I guess, uh, J Josh or Catherine, do we think that they're the same? I, I know, of course, we always have to pause and say, no one did a study where we put them directly against each other, right? Yeah, yeah. So, I mean, I would say overall, simple answer, yes, slash, we don't have enough information. You know, I think both target the KRAS G12C. Uh, we have had limited CNS efficacy data on both. I don't think there's a clear winner there. I think from a toxicity profile, also not a clear winner. You know, you can look at numbers looking slightly different uh, between studies. I would say the only thing that we have more for sotorasib than antigrasib is we do have the phase three data comparing it uh, to dose ataxal chemotherapy, which for the longest time has been our subsequent line therapy in this space where we did see that it improved the progression-free survival number. Uh, but unfortunately, the study did not have enough people in it uh, to, to really power it, meaning it didn't have enough statistical validity to look at overall survival. So I think um, in the immediate term, I, I think probably one could say they are relatively interchangeable, but I think you know we do need more information. There's obviously lots of trials ongoing at combining these medicines with other treatments that affect the signaling pathway um, of the KRAS mutation. And so I don't think that the story has been fully told. I would agree that the, you know, the official answer is that, uh, and I agree with that sentiment is that, you know, what would I use in the second line setting? Probably the fourth option that either drug is fine. Um, but if forced to make a choice between the two, and if I'm writing a prescription and saying, do I choose sodorasib or adograsib? Um, I would say in a patient with brain metastasis, we don't have great data about the efficacy of sodorasib in patients with central nervous center system tumors that are untreated. The adograsib uh, clinical trial did report data on showing response rates in this setting. Um, and so that are fairly similar to the overall response rates of adograsib in other areas of the body. Um, and so I might be inclined in a patient knowing that the efficacy is pretty similar of the two drugs. They work me mechanistically very similar. Um, the toxicity is very similar. In a patient with brain metastasis, if I'm going to choose between the two, I may be more inclined to choose adograsib, which is the drug that was most recently approved, um, but have been really in parallel development this entire time as a part of clinical trials. Um, we also, as was mentioned by Josh, thinking about can we combine these drugs safely with other drugs as in the setting of um, you know, clinical trials that are ongoing, it also remains to be seen how safely these drugs can be combined with immunotherapy, if they will be safe after immunotherapy or before immunotherapy, the sequence of therapy may matter. And those will be um, answers that will be needed to an be answered by ongoing clinical trials and clinical research that we're all doing to try to identify the best treatment strategies for a patient, not just with one therapy, but, but looking at the entire natural history and disease course of a patient.